Welcome to the SSAS and MDX training sessions, guys. So in last session, we discussed about a couple of properties and uh, we got stuck or I got stuck at a value, um, particularly in the Excel spreadsheet, how the value property helps in behaving differently. So I got the answer what mistake I've done yesterday, but we will rediscuss this particular property when we discuss about all the remaining um, dimension properties. I, I did a mistake uh, in yesterday's session, so I, I, I will correct that when we discuss about the remaining properties. Now, um, so if you still remember, we set a requirement for ourselves. The requirement was like to see the customer data, customer by sales and city by sales, if I'm not wrong, or employee by sales, something. One of the requirements we set to at, at the start of these sessions, right? Now, to meet the requirements, customer by sales data and employee by sales data what i need is the dimensions first what dimensions i need in this case i need customer dimension which i already built and i need employee dimension which i'm gonna build now once i build this uh, employee dimension then i'll go ahead and create the cube and complete the requirements what we have set at the starting of the findings so create a new dimension Click on next, use an existing table, click on next and um, employee key is the primary key. That's why it's uh, by default selected. Click on next and um, let me select employee e sales. Um, let me select photo too. I think a photo will not work because it's a binary data. Valid from, valid to, I don't need these dates and I don't need this. Let me go to next, click on employee. I created an employee dimension here. I have two dimensions here now. So what is pending? The metrics are pending. The dimensions are available. Now, if I see, I can see the employee here and I can see similarly, I can see the customer uh, attributes in the customer dimension. So let's start our new first queue. Click on next and you, you have multiple options. Generate tables in the data source. If you specify the template, then it will do that and we will not be using that. Create an empty cube and use an existing tables. Use an existing tables is an option. If you want to, you want analysis services to design everything for you. For example, if I select use and use existing tables, here it will ask you to select the what is the major group, which means what is the table that has the metrics that you are looking for or that you want to add to the cube. So first, if you select the measure table, let's say sales data is my measure table where, where I have all the metrics, click on next. It will ask me to pick what measures I want. Let's say, for example, I want quantity, I want uh, profit, I want tax amount, and uh, um, total including tax. So if you click on next, the next step is to select the dimensions, what dimensions you want. Uh, it's saying employee, which has relationship to that. So that's why it's showing employee. Click on next and city and uh, click on next. Here, you see the employee and city info are created or will be created. If I click on finish, if you go here, the customer is created, is already there. Employee is there. The new dimension, what it has created is city info. If you see the city info, the problem is it takes only the key. So if you use the existing tables, it creates all the dimensions only with the key attribute. And then you have to add all these uh, uh, remaining uh, attributes to the queue. So this is one way of designing the queue which will make your work easy. But uh, as a flow, if you see, you have to create your dimensions first. That's what we have done. And then you have to create an empty cube and add your dimensions to that. So use an existing tables is when you have to create a cube on the fly to see or to validate some data or as a prototype, if you do some POC, if you want to present something to the users, you may use that. Or if you are not interested in designing the developments, uh, sorry, in designing the dimensions manually, then you can take the help of this cube uh, uh, builder which we have seen just now. But 
I prefer to go by MTQ. So let's see by creating by taking the option MTQ. If you take an MTQ, it will you just need to select the data source. Once the data source is selected, it will not create anything. This is an empty queue. It, does, it, 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 it doesn't have any measures and it doesn't have any dimensions. Now, you know what is dimension. So a dimension is nothing but a table uh, which has your textual information that is required for your analysis. Let's say if this is city and this is country, if you, you will build a dimension out of this dimension table. And the measures or the measure groups are the one which has your metrics. Let's say this is your sales amount. This table will be used to create measure groups. Then what is cube? This is D and this is measure groups. And what is cube? Cube is nothing but collection of dimensions and measure groups and relationship between these two. You have to relate it. If you don't relate, it won't make any sense. Okay. Now cube, the shortest definition. Uh, it's a it's a collection of dimensions which will come here and it's a collection of uh, measure groups which will come here and you have to relate these two how these two are related if you have to specify the relationship between these two that is nothing but cube let's quickly create one cube and see how it looks so the first step as i mentioned it's a collection of dimensions and the measure groups and let me add the cube dimensions I have two dimensions created and uh, I'm selecting both and let me create the measure groups now here you have multiple options or multiple ways which you can pick to create the measure groups if you select a new measure what will happen is it will ask you to select the column and the table and the usage usage is nothing but the aggregation type what you are specifying for the measure like for example if you go back to SQL Server Management Studio, I'll tell, I'll explain you what is this usage means with an example in SQL. So if you open SQL Server Management Studio and connect to the database engine, and go to the new query, while one works, select star from dimension dot, uh, let's say customer. Let's see what are the columns that I have. I do have customers here or category, whatever. If I, if I pick customer, okay, I'll alias it as a inner join fact dot, what is the hierarchy we have? Fact dot sale b on a dot customer key is equal to b dot customer key. Now, if I execute this, this joins two tables and it will give you all the data. Here, this doesn't give any any meaning to you. If if you see the tax amount or let like, let's say the tax amount for for example, it will give you the tax amount. Tax amount is unknown. Uh, tax amount for the customer unknown. It is eleven point seven rupees or dollars whatever so unknown made shopping so many times he bought so many things and every time the tax was 11.7 and this particular customer has this 15.6 uh, and so on so this doesn't give any valid information to you this is raw data if you want to analyze what is the total sales or total tax amount paid by a particular customer what you need to do is you need to have an aggregation function in this case, let's say sum. So if I go for sum, it says that uh, tax amount and I have to group by because I'm using an aggregated function. Don't ask me to explain SQL Server here. I hope you are familiar with that. Group by customer. This, give, this groups the data, the tax amount data by customer and it returns the result. And if you want to see, who paid more tax order by let's say two and descending this gives me the order of the order by descending uh, by who paid more tax which customer paid more tax so if you see here this is giving me 
how many how much of tax that each customer has paid and here this is an aggregated fun, aggregate function similarly if you want to see which customer has more sales what you need to do you you should not go for count uh, sorry you should not go for sum you should go for count of one this gives you how many entries or how many records are there for each customer in your fact table so this is another aggregate function count similarly you can go for max max of uh, uh, which which uh, tax amount right so this gives me this gives what is the max of each customer similarly you can go for min all these are aggregate functions to un to analyze your data right so similarly the usage means what aggregate function you want to give for a particular measure and default is the sum and most of the cases you will go by sum and a few cases you will go by count very rare cases when you have a semi when you want to have semi additive measures we will discuss what is semi additive measures you may use go you may go for this uh, uh, first value last value first non empty last non empty max min and so on so now let's go with sum and what is your fact table my fact table is sales data and what you want to sum i want to sum the tax amount if i select that this creates a measure if you see here the tax amount is created and that is your metric this is one way another way is you can instead of selecting new measure you can select the new measure group which means here it will ask you to select the table that's it the table is sales data if you select that it will take all the integer fields or the all the numeric fields from your from the table and it creates sum of if you see all the aggregate functions is taken as sum even for customer key it's just because an integer it has taken that customer key and it has created an aggregate function for that so this doesn't make sense so let me delete it and um, what else will not make sense this new column i don't know what is there and it also creates one count one count by default if you go for new measure group the count gives you the total number of records or number of sales made the similar to the count that we have seen here so this output will be equal to the same the output if you drag and drop the sales data count into your cube browser let me name it as uh, sales volume now i have a measure group i have set of cubes now I, I mentioned that the relationship between these two how how we can relate this to relate these two you have an another tab called dimension usage in dimension usage if you see employee to sales data always remember um, this is your fact facts will be on your columns if you have multiple facts all these facts will be on your columns and all the dimensions will be on your sorry this is row or column columns yeah this is row all the dimensions will be here so the intersecting point will will say what is the relationship for example employee to say sales data this is the intersecting point this particular box says how the employee is related to the sales data similarly customer to sales data this is the box and it says how it is related now if you see the relationship is set for the employee and the sales data but customer and sales data the relationship is not set what is the reason the reason is again back to our data source view i mentioned that by data source view will be very helpful in few cases if you design it properly if i go back to the data source view let's say here white gold import store tw and if I arrange these tables, if you see the sales data and employee relationship is given here. But for customer, the relationship is not given in the data source view. That's why when I try to add the customer dimension and the sales data measure group, the relationship is not set by default. So let it be, let me process the cube. I can show you what will happen if there is no relationship between these two. Okay. What will be the outcome if there is no relation uh, what will be the output if there is no relationship between a dimension and the measure group so to see that let me quickly process it 
it should not take uh, too long. I hope my server is running, yes. Okay, processing completed. And uh, let me go to the browser to see the data or you can go, you can use Excel. So first I drag one measure from here. Let's say for example, tax amount. So this is the total tax amount. If I execute it, this is the total tax amount. And now let me add an employee here into the box. And if I execute it, it gives you employee wise tax amount. How much tax amount uh, when this guy is employee, Hudson on slope. Similarly, Jack Water, 25, 55, 832.96. So this is giving you the breakup by each employee. And if it is, you can also go by each salesperson. If it is true, then the, what is the amount? All, all the people, all the employees are salespersons. And let me go for preferred name. It gives you by preferred name, Amy, Anthony, Archer, Hudson, and so on. And I don't know what this ID, it may be employee ID. Let's see how it's, the employee ID is 7, 8, 16, 3, 13, and so on. So if you see the tax amount is giving you the, the sum, the total or the total tax amount per each employee here. Now, instead of employee diminution, so this is how it looks when you have a relationship. When you don't have a relationship between the dimension and the fact table, the data looks like this. Let's say for example, I, I select customer and if I execute it, if you see this is giving you the total amount for every customer. So if you, if you, if you have any report like this, it won't make sense. You cannot understand what is the this customer's tax amount what is this customer's tax amount you won't get that because there is no relationship and hence the data is getting repeated the same data is repeated and this data is nothing but if you remember remember this number 25782098 is nothing but the total sales or total tax amount so the total tax amount will be placed next to each member of the customer attribute so this is why the relationship is very important and if you see any data like this, then you can blindly say, okay, the relationship is missing between the dimension that has this attribute and, uh, and the measure group that has this metric. So if you have that measure group and the dimension relation, then you can see the data break properly. So instead of uh, giving it manually, let me do something. Let me delete the customer and I'm going back to the DSP. I'm trying to give the relationship here, drag and drop, I can do that instead of using the wizard. Now, let me go back to the cube design and if I add it back, uh, now you see the relationship is set. Okay, once the relationship is set, I need to process the cube because there is a change in the schema of the cube as well as the data source view. Let me process it. And uh, if I go to the browser and reconnect, let me drag the sales or profit or tax amount. Let me, let me select both. And if I go to the customer now, it should give you the breakup. You see it's giving the profit as well as tax amount by the customer. So this is why data source view designing is very important. And second thing, the relationship between the dimension and the attribute is very, very important. If you don't provide, uh, sorry, dimension and the measure group is very, very important. If you don't provide that, it won't make any sense. It's as, e uh, as equal as not having that dimension in your queue, okay? So now um, I deleted this just before, just a few seconds back. Um, now let me show you something. This is fine as long as the relationship is given, it's directly taken in the cube and you are all good. What if the relationship is not given in the data source view due to some reasons? 
uh, let's say you have many tables and you don't you don't care about giving relationships properly in the data source and so on <clears throat> so this is the customer dimension let me add it back when i add it back the only thing is it won't show any relationship here by default it will be not related so you can use this button to give the relationship when you click on this it, it open a wizard where you can set the relationship how to define the relationship first you need to select the relationship there are few a few options here one is non no relationship which means there is no relationship at all between the dimension table and the fact table and second one is regular third one is fact fourth one is referenced fifth one is many to many and sixth one is data mining relationship now let's see something uh, first one the no relationship if you go for no relationship you can see there is a little text here the dimension and the measure group are not related so the information what you want is given here and the pictorial information is given right under that so the yellow highlighted one is your fact table and this is your dimension table and if you see here there is no relationship between these two these are two these two are separated right so this no relationship means the dimension table and the measure group are not related and fact table and the um, dimension table uh, will not be related and the same pictorial information is given here now let me go <coughs> to the second one the regular relationship regular relationship means the dimension table is joined directly to the fact table so this is your dimension table and this is your fact table and you see i told you it should be always at the uh, dimension side the arrow mark and these two are directly related so our case the customer is directly related to the fact table so the right option for the relationship type for us in this scenario is regular which means the dimension table and the fact table are directly related let's see what properties we need to set you need to set the granularity attribute so the granularity attribute means at what grain this dimension is related to the fact table. So at what grain in the sense, what is the key column or what is the key attribute of your dimension? The key attribute is always, will be the grain, which means that is the one which uniquely identify the entire row in the dimension table. That's the least grain in the dimension. So if you select the granularity attribute, the key column is the granularity attribute. If you select key column, then the dimension table is listed here. And the measure group table is listed here actually they can list it well in advance but i don't know why this order and this dimension table uh, which is the key column is listed on the left here you need to select the measure group table what is the oh, sorry measure group column what is the column that can be used to link to the dimension uh, on the customer key field so there is a customer key if you give this then it is enabled I've never used this advanced. Let's see what is under advanced. In advanced measure group bindings, attribute name, these are the attributes and that this is the dimension table. This is fine. Uh, relationship between customer key, customer key, null processing is automatic or freezer. This is null processing, we'll see that. So what is in extra here? I don't see anything useful information here, which uh, is not available in any other place so this we have it in the dimensions this is just a table to view this is something where is that oh here if i select this this is getting selected okay so this is a different view okay uh, now it's giving a warning message or information message the default attribute bindings have been modified so the customer key to customer key is select, uh, related and if you click on OK, the relationship is set. So either automatic by analysis services or you can set it before. I mean, the key thing for you to understand when you have to set it manually is how these two are related. If these two are related by regular relationship, which means directly related, then go with regular relationship. We will discuss the remaining one by one okay before that let's quickly process and see how the data whether the data is coming correctly and as expected or no
Okay, it's processed. Let me close it. Go to the browser and reconnect. And now you can see the data properly. If you can slice and dice on any field because all the dimensions, the two dimensions and the measure group is related. So this is the total profit and you can have a by employee and you can have which employee has what customer. Let me tell you one thing, the data that we have in the wide world importers database is, is, is the worst compared to AdventureWorks. AdventureWorks has very good quality and better data. This data, I, at least I don't like this data. If you drag customer, it will break the data. I mean, it will break the report or the result set by employee and customer wise profit. If you see when this guy is the employee and this guy is the customer, this is the profit. And this guy is the employee and this guy, see, this is a customer actually, but this looks like a product to me. The data in this one looks like a product to me. That is why I don't like this data. So this is how you can slice and dice the data when the relationships are set properly. Now, let's see fact relationship. There is one more relationship type, uh, the fact relationship. What is fact relationship? If I select this, this gives you, I mean, the, the information about this will be given here. If you see the dimension table is the fact table. When the dimension table is the fact table, then we call it as fact relationship. Can you tell me one scenario where the dimension table will be the fact table? You can give a guess. You can ping me if you have a, uh, if you have any answer. Date team is not the right answer. I mean, date team, you, you cannot use, you cannot generate any metrics out of it, uh, as far as I know. Let me tell you one example. So here, if you see the sales data, our data is pretty much uh, nicely designed for fact relationship. If you see this guy, sales data, it has some textual information, right? The description. You can get the descri description, okay? and uh, so to get the description you need to create a dimension table to create a dimension out of it what columns are unique you should know that i don't know what columns are unique let me add the sales data table and see what columns are unique so where is my sales sale okay i'm just adding it to see what columns are unique so that i can easily create the dimension you see sales key sale key and invoice date key are unique in the table so let me see if I have the sale key and invoice something date key. Where is that sale key, sale key? Let me know if you can see that. So if, if it is not there, let me add those two columns, sale key and where is that other one? Invoice date key, I've added these two and uh, invoice date key and sale key are the key columns, which means these two columns combinedly uh, identify a row uh, uniquely, right? Unique identified for a row. So let me define a logical primary key on it, sale key and invoice key. And now let me create a dimension on it. So for the dimension, let me select use existing table and let me select sales data. And if you see here, the key columns, if you still remember what we discussed in the last session, the key columns and the name column property, if you have multiple key columns, it is mandatory to give the name column. You remember that? So this guy has two key columns and what you want to show as the name column is, uh, is, uh, is, the, error, uh, is the warning message here. The name column must be specified when a composite key is used. Now for this, out of this, I'll pick one, for example, sales key and go next. And it is saying there are related tables. You want to bring in these two tables. If you bring in these two tables, then you remember we can create uh, attributes from different dimension tables. We discussed about that. That will happen. Let me show you if you want. Let me have a city info. Click on next. This is the sale key and I want description from here. 
and um, what else we have and it join with the city and i can have a city name country name continent region sub region location and that's it click on um, sales location and if i click on finish so this is what i was discussing you have two tables and you have attributes from two tables and the least grain is used to generate the key or else the primary key error will be erased so let me process it to see if this is this will process successfully so i'm processing only the dimension run and it processes the sales dimension and now you can see the description data in your browser along with the other dimension attributes to city if you see city it gives you city if you go for description it gives you overall the descriptions that are available in the sale data so this is an example for creating a dimension using multiple tables okay but our requirement is not that let me go and delete it uh, I want to create only using the fact table. We are trying to explore what is fact relationship. So I mentioned the fact relationship is uh, the relationship between, I mean, when the dimension table and the fact table are same, then we call it as fact relationship. Let me quickly create a uh, dimension with only sales data. And I'm gonna select uh, sales key next. And I'm unchecking, I don't want to include the tables that are related. And let me select the description. Uh, sales data click on finish now the dimension is created uh, I don't need these columns I can delete it and uh, salesperson key I don't need this let me delete it and description is fine now let me add it to my cube I'm adding the sales data dimension click on ok and if I go to the dimension you say you see it's automatically set the relationship is automatically set and if you see the icon it shows some metric kind of icon right the map kind of icon that means it is fact relationship so when the table when the dimension is created out of uh, with with a table a and the fact is created or measure group is created with the same table then the relationship is called fact relationship and it will be set automatically you don't need to worry anything and nothing can be edited here it's all fact relationship means the dimension table is same and the measure group table is same this is how you can set the fact relationship so let me process it run This is the new dimension, so it is processing and then it processes the cube. Let me go to the browser, reconnect, and let me get the sales data. Let's say profit. Now I have the sales dimension, and if you drag and drop this description, it gives you the description wise profit. So this is how you can use. The fact table, if there are any any what you called uh, um, textual information in the fact table, you can also use that as your dimension table and you can relate it to the measure group using the fact relationship. Another scenario is, let's say for example, this customer or employee, if you want to see the customer count or employee count or color count or product count, whatever. So in that case, how can you get the count? Count is a metric. So you have to create a measure group out of it so let me create a measure group for employee to see how many employees are there what is the count blah 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 before that let me see what attributes i have e salesperson preferred name and so on so i'm creating a measure group or a new measure using the count of rows on customer right or employee employee okay and employee i will say count or employee okay count is not a bad name and if i go to the dimension usage automatically this set to the fact relationship now 
If I process it, this gives me count of employees. Okay. So this is another use case where you will be using fact relationship. If you want to, if you have products, if you want to see the product count, you have the product as a dimension and the product as a measure group and use the count measure, aggregate measure and that sets the fact relationship. So let me reconnect it. And now you see a new folder where you have employee count. So the total employee count is 213. And let me drag the employee. And uh, there are 10 records with this guy name. And I don't know, I can't believe that. How can they have this? Let me try that. Let me execute a SQL query to see why we are getting 10 employee counts for ALICA something and so on. So for to test this or to validate the data, what you need to do is just go for uh, employee table here and write the same group by statement. I don't need this join group by employee and uh, count of one. So if you see here, there is a Lily code with 18. And if you see here, you'll, you should see the same one, Lily code 18. Same way, J Shan 17, it's a 17. So now let's see why we have multiple counts. This is, I, I told you, right, this is bad data. Let me quickly see why we have some 17 counts or 18 counts for each employee. So dimension, generally it should be count, count should be one, right? Because that's the employee table. Employee should be one to one unless it's the same employee and name for multiple employees let me see i'm guessing something i hope that will be the reason where uh, employee is equal to this guy if i execute it you see this is the employee key for this person this is the id and lily code and every employee has multiple records the reason is uh valid from and valid to date is given so from this date to this date this is valid and from 8 to 8 of 1 3 to 19 1 this is the record and finally the one which is active which is the current record is with the date 9999 so this is the only active record for her and i don't know who created this data warehouse this is the shittest data warehouse i have seen okay so what they are trying to do is they're trying to track the changes of the employee and uh, based on this they are gonna say that okay this guy this is the active record and the current employee key is 206 i don't know what the what's the i mean how this is designed but this is not the best design of the data warehouse but our cube is working perfect it's giving me the counts of the employees with the same name there are 10 records for this employee and 14 records for this employee and so on so this is the um, fact relationship in the analysis services so before going to the reference and uh, many to many relationships which for which uh, i don't think we have tables in the wide world importers database um, so let me explain a little bit about the partitions Partitions are very important and partitions, if you see, it will have one partition for every measure group that you have created. If you see the cube structure, you have two measure groups created, sales data and employee. And if you go to the partitions for sales data and for employee, it says that, okay, uh, there is a, this is how or this is what it is using to get the sales data. And this is what it is using to get the employee data. So by default, remember there will be a partition created for every measure group. What will happen if I delete it? Define partitions for the measure group. Okay, there are no partitions now. Let me process it. So I deleted the partition that is created for sales data. And now 
uh, processing this and processing here. You see some difference? Here it tries to process the partition. Here it tries to process nothing because there is no partition defined. So if you go to the browser, what data you will get in return when you use the measures? Click to execute query, there is nothing because the partition is deleted. So partition is the container of the data, container of your fact data, where your data will be coming from to the fact table. So partitions are mandatory for any measure group. If there is no partition, like in this case, then it's not going to return any data. It will return blank. So let me create a partition for this. If you click on next, the sales data measure group, this is the measure group for which I'm trying to create the partition. I have two measure groups, sales data and partition source. Where is the table that is the source for this particular sales data? It is in this particular data source view. If you have multiple data source views, you will have that. Uh, and find tables. You can find the tables. Let me say this is my sales table. And here it shows what are the available objects based on the find tables that are given. Select this, click on next. Uh, these options will discuss. Click on next, next, and finish. So, welcome to aggregation design. I don't want to create aggregation design. Now, if you see the partition is created again. If I process the cube now, now you will see the sales data. So, the, without a partition, then the measure group is nothing. It's just blank without the partitions. So now if you see the sales data, it read some records that it read 22, sorry, 2,28,265 records. And you can see the same in the browser. The cube collection is updated. I have not processed the other cube it seems so. Let me process it or I should have reconnected. Reconnected would have solved it. But let me process it anyhow. I did not reconnect. That's why it's uh, throwing that error message. OK, close, reconnect. And uh, if I go to the sales data, now profit will return the values because it has the container, the partition container for sales data. Now, um, go to the partition again and uh, where is the partition options storage settings okay <coughs> which one we have to do? this black color is uh, screwing it up Okay, let me select the source. So if you click on this, this particular button, you see, the, there, there'll be some buttons uh, which will pop up uh, here, sales data. And this talks about the source for this partition, which means from where the data is coming for this partition. If you click on this, the first page is very familiar to you, familiar to you guys. This is a table binding. And there are two options for binding the data, binding type. So the first one is table binding, which means the whole table from the sales data will be pulled from the source and placed in the in this partition. The second one is query binding. If you have a query binding, you can specify the query. What query you want to give. You can select everything or you can, uh, this is check to check the syntax or you can have a where class to filter the data. For example, if you want to show the data only greater than year 2016 then you can filter that if you don't need to i mean uh, you, if you don't want to show the previous data you can have the filter or anything of that sort oops i selected wrong i think i pressed the wrong <laughs> okay where uh, which one I can take? Let me see what kind of data that I have in fact sales. So 
so i have data like uh, city sales key sales person key and so on and uh, uh, let's say invoice date has a few years 2013 2000 what else we have let me go down it has only 2013 data it seems or Control N. It has up to 2016. So what I can do here is uh, I can specify a filter condition where year of what is the column name invoice date key is equal to 2013. So I'm trying to filter the data. I'm checking the syntax. This has space in the column, so it should be in square brackets. And uh, the spelling is mistake. It should be invoice. Now this is fine. So if I execute this query, the total number of records you received is 228265. Now let me execute the query here. It will filter only for the year 2013. It has only 60,000 records. Now if I click on OK, and if I process this partition, it reads only that 60,000 records because I'm filtering, I'm telling the server, uh, or I'm defining the partition in such a way that pull only 2013 data. So there is a lot of benefits using partitions. It improves your cube processing speed. It improves your cube querying speed. So querying is when when you write MDX queries, it improves the performance. We will see that when we with an example when we use the MDX queries or when we start looking into the MDX queries. But here the processing speed will be increased. I'll explain you how with an example now. So if you see here, it read only sixty thousand nine sixty eight records, and if you still remember the profit, the profit is eight five seven two something. Let me reconnect it, and if I go to the profit again. It will show it will give you only 2013 profits because I read only 2013. I created one partition and I marked it as named, uh, sorry, uh, query level here, query binding, and I filtered the data. Now, how can you get the remaining data? You can create new partition. This is the problem with the black background. You see, there is a button here, there is a link here, new partition. If you select this new partition, it opens the wizard. And here, uh, select the table, go for it. And again, you can go for the same uh, table partition. It won't rest it, okay? Click on next, click on next, and design aggregations later, finish. Now, if you see one partition is table partition and one partition is query partition. This is the whole data that comes from the system and I mean from the table, this is the 2013 data if I process the cube now what will be the output will it give extra records or only the number of records that we have in the system like in the table like uh, 22 82 65 will you will it give this data this number of records or this number of records are both this plus that go for a guess while I process the cube how many records will be there now? 2,28,265 or 60,000 or 2,90,000. What would be the count of the records? I created two partitions, one partition with the table binding and another partition with query binding filter to 2013 year. So if you see the number of records here, it read into the two partitions. One is 60,000, one is 22. So it duplicates the data because you are asking the server to read the same data twice. This 2013 data here as well as here. Now, if you go and see the uh, measures, let's say uh, I'll, I'll see the profit. It gives you more profit than before. Before it was eight something, now it's more. And the best way to see that is the volume. If you drag the volume, it gives you both two to 22, I mean, two lakhs, 20,000 plus 60,000 
combined that number of records has been read so you have to be very very careful while creating the partitions you should not miss any record and you should not add or you should not uh, pull any record in extra so either way you will land in trouble if you miss a record now the numbers will go down if you if you insert the same record twice the number will go up but it will not give you the right data so always it's good but it's important to make sure that your partition queries are reading only the data all is reading all the data only once so now to fix this problem i'm converting this to query binding and uh, actually i can copy that uh, weight class okay and uh, i'm making it as query binding where is equal to 2014 okay and i can name it as sale data 2014 and i can name this as sale data 2013 so now i have two partitions created one partition for 2013 one partition for 2014 and let me create one more partition click on next sale data sale data go i can select the query binding here itself instead of going there where this is for 2015 because i know there is 2015 data next um, next and design aggregations later and finish now this is 2015 data and we do have 2016 data so sale data click on next specify the query so here instead of uh, giving 2016 what i can do is greater than or equal to 2016 which means if there is any records with the year greater than invoice date year greater than 2016 or 2016 will be pulled in this last partition so i'll name it as sales data 2016 and above finish so if you see here 2013 data 14 data 15 data 16 and above so in other words i'm covering all the data here and to make sure that I'm not going to miss any records, it's better to have this 2013 and below. Because if there is a new record entered with the date less than 2016, then we are going to miss that. So instead of equal to for 2013, sorry, less than 2013, I mean, less than 2013, then it will be pulled into this partition. So if I process it now, either today or tomorrow or day after or after 100 years, it's gonna read all the records from the pack table only once because that is how I define the partitions. So let me process it real quick. And you can see the different partitions reading the different uh, records. And the total should be always the total number of records that we have in the table because this will give this will pull everything less than 2013, less than or equal to 2013. This gives 2014, 15, and this is 16 and above. There is no overlap of any dates here. So if I go and check the data in browser, and let me see the count, which is easy to find out. You see 228265. This is what we have here, 228265. So while creating the partitions, the monthly partitions or quarterly partitions or yearly partitions, you have to write the queries in such a way that you have to keep every possibility in mind. There may be 2019 record comes into the system, but that should not be missed. So you have to create the partitions pro properly. So in real time, what people will do is they'll be creating partitions every month if it is monthly partitions. If it is daily partitions, they create partition daily using SSIS jobs. SSIS, there are few script commands which you can use to create the partitions on analysis services dynamically. Okay. And there are so many things you have to consider while creating the partitions. But this knowledge is good enough for you guys to um, design the partitions. Now, let, let's, let's quickly check one thing. I said these partitions increase the processing speed. How it's going to increase? So for that, um, so this is how 
the source table is your source table right sale data and this is how your partition when you create a table level partition what will happen is when you click on process this record has 22 2 lakhs 26000 something number of uh, number of records this particular table has when you process it when you trigger process what will happen is it will set a pipeline between these two and read the data from here to here so it sucks the data from this table using a straw or using one pipe right if it has 2 lakh 22000 and if it reads 1000 records per second how many seconds it will take you have to divide it the number of records divided by 1000 that gives you number of seconds it's gonna take now if you create four partitions let's assume this is your source data and if you create 1 2 3 4 based on your number of cpu core and processing speed and the memory it sets the number parallel connections to this guy and it reads the data in parallel so while reading the parallel let's say this reads a thousand records this reads thousand records it all depends on your cpu core how many cores you have and this reads thousand records so this will be four times at least faster than the single uh, pipe i mean they are pulling the data using single pipe so thus partitions saves time while processing the cubes this is a simple example where you have only 200k or 250k max of records right but in real time you will have a uh, 100 million records imagine if you have 100 million records how much time it is going to take to read using single channel compared to multiple channels if you have 10 channels or 15 channels which you have created for every month right or every year and you are maintaining 15 years of data then the uh, performance will be definitely increased because of the parallel processing and if you observe something here when you process it here i'm processing only one partition so when when you process there will be an option which will be default set to parallel processing processing order and trans this is parallel and also there should be something how can i go there there should be a button here on the right it's it's a uh, hidden in my page like just like remove there is another button here how can i go to that let me try tab tab is working between only these two okay 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 now i think it's on the button see it was on the button i used the tab that the button is hidden somewhere in the right here so if you see here parallel you can set the parallel as to yes and you are telling the server to decide or you can specify it depends on the core if you specify 128 it won't set 128 parallel connections it checks your computer hardware and based on that it sets how many max it can take and it will set that so that is why people prefer to give let the server decide if you have 10 partitions and if server thinks it can set five connections in parallel it will make those five connections and suck the data from the source if you go for sequential it will go one by one one by one one pro one one partition processing and then another partition processing and so on so this is the default one and uh, so this is the property you can set to improve the performance by creating the partitions to, uh, you can pull the data in parallel and these partitions also help in improving the query performance we will see when we talk about the mdx queries thank you guys for joining today and we will see i mean see you in the next session